This is the introduction to Fontology. Fresh with Felicia here, and today we need to talk about fonts. There's actually a science that studies the effectiveness of the fonts you use. After seeing some very bad designs show up in our crafting classes, we decided it was time to have the discussion about fonts. A little about me. After I crash landed in a pod sent from Kepler-186F, I was in corporate marketing for a few decades and more recently was a hoity-toity CMO. So I consulted with tons of professional graphic designers regarding ad design and especially fonts. I didn't realize there was a science behind it until these designers schooled me. <laughs> How about you, Felicia? You know a thing or two about fonts. Well, me? Well, I managed a team of web designers and web developers for a major government contractor. And we had strict branding and design guidelines we had to follow, which included font choices. And those guidelines are super strict. I remember those. And after digging into the science of fonts, I was shocked to discover very few people cover one of the most important aspects of creating great designs how to properly choose and use the right typefaces or fonts. So let's briefly dig into an overview of fontology, the study and practice of designing and using fonts, an essential element of visual communication. Using fonts is a blend of art and psychology that plays a crucial role in effective communication. By understanding the different types of fonts and the basic principles of font usage, you will totally enhance the visual appeal readability, and even marketability of your designs. That's right. Whether you're designing a website, making a t-shirt, creating stickers, or even writing an email, the right font choice can make a significant difference in how your message is received. And not to alarm you, but the wrong font choice could send a terrible message. Remember the Comic Sans font <laughs> email catastrophes in the 1990s? So yes, fontology is kind of important. And fonts are not just about making text readable. They are responsible for three critical functions in design. Fonts can convey emotion, set the tone, and enhance the aesthetic appearance of any printed or digital content. Whether you're a graphic designer, a web developer, or simply someone interested in typography, understanding fontology can improve the effectiveness of your designs. We'll cover all that here in this video. So, what the heck is a font? The English word font comes from the French word fonte, which means something that has been melted. Before that, French fonte came from the Latin verb fondere, meaning to melt or to pour. The connection to melting and pouring relates to the historical process of creating typefaces from molten lead in the early day of printing presses. And before that, fond come from Greek. Fun come from money because printing is expensive. And dairy come from where the money go after you eat it. There you go. I just can't with you. <laughs> and today, a font is known as a specific style of text characters. Technically, fonts belong to larger families known as typefaces. For example, Comic Sans is a typeface. And Comic Sans bold, italic, regular are fonts within that typeface. But most people just call Comic Sans, Times New Roman, Arial, or any old typeface a font. So let's chat about font types next. Fonts or typefaces are categorized into several kinds or types. I hate to reuse that word. Each with its unique characteristics and suitable use cases. Serif or serif fonts. These fonts have little I call them dingleberries, or small <laughs> lines, dots, or strokes attached to the end of a larger stroke in a letter within a particular font family, and they're called serifs. Examples include Times New Roman in Georgia. Historically, serif fonts were used in print media to, I guess, due to their readability. But to be honest, I believe sans serif typefaces or fonts are actually more readable. In French, sans means without, so sans serif fonts lack the dingleberries, as French likes to call them, or the small serifs at the end of the strokes. These fonts are considered more modern, like Arial, and the new default font for Microsoft Word, Aptos, and are commonly used in digital media. Script fonts try to copy cursive handwriting, which basically means anyone under 30 probably can't read them. They can be formal, like those frilly wedding invitations, or casual, like those playful fake handwritten notes you get in your junk mail that look a lot like a letter from Dear Grandma Judy. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat this later, so please take note. Never, ever use all caps 
with script fonts, please, and I'll tell you why in a second. Monospace fonts were carried over from the old typewriter days. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Each character occupies the same exact amount of horizontal space, even if the letter doesn't need it. Monospace fonts are still used in computer coding and programming environments because they reduce the confusion among similar letters and characters, which is pretty important when coding. It is. Display fonts are those decorative fonts intended for use in large size things like headlines and signs. They're not typically used for body text due to their elaborate design, although a lot of bad designers do this all the time. It's just too much. So let's chat about legibility and readability. Legibility refers to how easily individual characters can be distinguished from one another. It is crucial for ensuring that text can be read without strain. Script fonts are notoriously confusing, especially with the letters I and L. Readability refers to how easily text can be read and understood. This involves choosing the right font size, line height, and letter spacing. All important elements. Some fonts are too thin to be seen from a distance or spaced too close together so that they kind of overlap. And again, never ever use all caps with 99% of all script fonts because you just can't read them. That's very true. And what the heck is up with the double stacked or double story A? You know, the weird looking lowercase funny looking letter that no one ever writes. Font professionals consider the double story A to be more readable in smaller font sizes or dense text, reducing the likelihood of confusion with similar characters like O or G. It's also considered to be more classy, whatever. Agree to disagree. The double stacked A is one of the few arguments for supporting the Comic Sans typeface. Let's talk about hierarchy and contrast. Creating a visual hierarchy helps guide the reader's eye along your message and emphasizes the most important elements. So obviously the headline is the most important part. It's what brings you in. So a headline should always be larger, bolder, and more prominent than the rest of whatever you're printing or making. Contrast between different fonts and font sizes can help establish this hierarchy. For example, using a bold sans serif font for headings and then a regular serif font for body text can create a clear distinction between different sections. Let's talk about consistency and alignment. Consistency in the font usage ensures a cohesive look throughout the design. There's an unwritten rule about limiting the number of fonts to two or three in any sign, shirt, or article to help maintain consistency. The fastest way to spot an amateur designer is to see 10 different fonts on one sticker, sign, or t-shirt. No, just no. The alignment of text enhances readability even further and gives the design a clear, organized appearance. In the biz, they call it justification. Left justification, or ragged right, is the most common alignment in English, followed by center justification for a more balanced or symmetrical look. And printed articles tend to use full or forced justification to align text to both the left and the right margins. It only works with certain fonts. Trust me, due to its awkward force spacing, this almost never looks good in any creative design. Sometimes a little extra space or kerning between characters adds a cool effect, especially with one or two headline words. Just don't overdo it. And I've seen professional sign shops do some stupid things with text. No, you cannot simply stretch the font for the words Paul's plumbing so that it fits the width of his work van. Stretched text often looks terrible. Artists didn't spend years creating amazing fonts so some Yahoo could stretch it out of proportion because their sign shop doesn't care that the font on your truck looks absolutely nothing like the font on your business cards. <laughs> Sorry, it gets me a little hot. So how exactly do you choose the right font for your project? Well, let's find out. Let's talk about choosing the right font for your project. Here's where things get a little sketchy. Whether you consciously realize it or not, you are probably striving for a certain feel when you create crafty, artsy creations. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're making an inspirational sign, <laughs> or a funny ornament, or a sarcastic sticker, or maybe even a memorial for a lost pet. Certain fonts can convey feelings and emotions, so you'll need to choose the right typeface or font for your project. Consider the purpose of your design. For formal designs, a serif font might be appropriate. 
A script font or maybe a display font might be better for some silly fun things. Then think about your target audience and what their preferences might be. Older people might prefer larger, bolder, more legible fonts, while a younger audience might appreciate trendy, unique typefaces. Color, it's important too. Remember that some people can't see the colors red or green very clearly. That's true. The context in which the font will be used also matters. For instance, display fonts are ideal for headlines and posters, but not for a memorial about great grandma's legacy. Let's talk about the tone and emotion of fonts. The font you use in your design may convey a certain tone or invoke a certain emotion in someone else, even though you may not feel that way. And you don't want that tone and emotion to be the wrong tone or emotion. Serif fonts are more aligned with formal messages, trust and reliability, and class and sophistication. You might use a serif font to communicate recognition to engrave or print an award, or a formal sign or address. Sans serif tend to be less formal, more modern, and friendly, and simplistic. Mm -hmm. Think product packaging, inspirational messages, snarky stickers, or fun t-shirts. It's hard to explain in words, you just have to see it. That's right. A big question we get is how do you pair fonts, like color schemes or wines? Which fonts work best together? Effective font pairing involves combining fonts that complement each other. A common strategy is to pair a serif font with a sans serif font to create a balanced contrast. But you can't just use any one, and we'll explain why. Tools like Google Fonts, Font Pair, and many AI websites can help you find font combinations that some folks think work well together. Font pairings are highly subjective, so don't take anyone's recommendation as gospel. For example, we used an AI to scour the interwebs and found these supposedly perfect free Google font pairings. Now, take a look at these font pairings and see if you agree. Classic and elegant. Modern and clean. Playful and friendly. Creative and artistic. Warm and inviting. Next, let's take a look at some examples of great and not so great fontology. Amateur designers, especially Ashley in accounting or Elon in engineering, you know, those left brain types should never be set free to create anything that the outside world may see. Now, it's important to understand font licensing. You can't just download any font you want and use it willy-nilly wherever you want. And especially if you plan to sell your creations. That's right. And many fonts are free for personal use, meaning if you're teaching or demonstrating like we are right now, or making something for yourself or your best friend, or maybe a few t-shirts, signs, or stickers, and you're not selling them, then you're probably fine. If you plan to sell them, you will definitely need to purchase a commercial license. And don't try to beg for forgiveness thing. It won't work for you. Once a licensor sees that your Stanley Topper words of inspiration designs have gone viral and you're bragging that you just sold 30,000 of them, you can be sure their lawyers will come up knocking for their cut and the settlement will probably be a whole lot more than the initial licensee fees were. That's right. Some fonts require a license for just about any use. So always check the licensing terms before using a font in your commercial project. And you can find those by Googling them. Font licenses can run anywhere from free to thousands of dollars per typeface. So let's wrap this font thing up. I'm sure you have amazing new designs to create with this new information. And if you're wondering why that Remembrance mug with the Comic Sans font isn't selling like hotcakes, well, what do you think about this design? By understanding the basics of fontology, you can improve your design skills and create visually appealing art that correctly captures your desired audience's attention. It's basically common sense. Now get to it. And if you have any questions or want to add to this, leave us a comment below. 
And don't forget to like and share this valuable information with all your designer friends. Happy designing!